I mean, <laughs> it's a massive privilege to stand on to stand on the shoulders of giants who have poured so much into nurturing of children and young people in our town for like literally centuries, and and then you end up seeing this higher tour going around the schools, inspiring a whole new generation, followed by the biggest youth event I've ever seen in my memory, and then a week or two later it hits. Uh, I found the pandemic really strange in what it did to youth work. Like, I thought going into the pandemic, and I think many youth workers made this assumption too, that we'd be all right. Like, we'd create a space online for them. Like, young people are digital natives, so everything will just come together. But actually, that really wasn't my experience. And I think it wasn't the experience of many youth workers. So many people working, with young people in school, some with Christian schools workers, just found it really disorientating. Suddenly not being able to go into school, suddenly being forced online. Groups stopped, contact paused, in-person schools ministry restricted. Relationships were affected, volunteers were lost, young people were isolated. And sadly, some youth groups, through no fault of the practitioners, were decimated. For others though, it was actually an opportunity to reimagine. So people obviously took things online, they thought outside the box of how to do things maybe a bit differently. But it was a real mixed bag across the field. And I think people have found that both challenging, um, but also so many have seen just the opportunity that's before them to totally rethink how they do youth work and how they engage with kids and young people. So when the pandemic hit, uh, we really lost that sense of community in our school, which we really thrive on. We were suddenly all teaching from a home, juggling our own children as well as home learning uh, with a class that we couldn't see anymore. And we really did miss that sense of family and worship and getting together. I think the pandemic has affected me and people my age um, because we haven't been able to see each other and connect as much. Lockdown affected me because I missed all my friends and like, I just wanted to see them. I didn't like being gone to school because I really liked school and being with friends. They were starved of personal contact, they were starved of relationship. And all of this has impacted their health, their mental health, as well as their education and for some, their future plans. I think young people are quite resilient, but we cannot underestimate the impact the pandemic has had on them. 
people with parents as key workers could still go into school, but it wasn't the same because they didn't have all their friends there. I couldn't see all my friends and I couldn't give anyone in my family a hug and it was really annoying um, standing in the window saying, well, the only thing which was good about it was that my nana made us some cakes. I thought the pandemic affected me and my friends uh, in a good way because we appreciated our teachers a bit more because a couple of us struggled without the teachers being in the room. We couldn't get in schools initially and then things began to open up and what I love about Southport Area Schools Trust and Tabs and the team is that you guys really began to innovate in different ways. They were always on the end of an email to us, they had worships online the children absolutely loved. So there we were, locked down, in a house, together, but by some sort of miracle we decided to start sharing a house with our friend Emily, who happens to be the children and youth pastor at Christchurch. And so we decided to make videos together. And then all this video equipment just started turning up that Tabs had ordered and our lounge was taken over by this huge green screen sheet and studio lights and we couldn't watch TV or do anything because the lounge was just full of stuff. And Tabs just kept ordering things and then switched into this video editing robot right around the clock. We were fortunate that our school used Tabs and Hetty's video assemblies. We watched them in our class. They were really good and different each week, fun and exciting. I am glad that we were able to learn more about God and what it means to be a Christian. It was a real highlight of the children's week and actually was a sense of continuity for the children. I enjoyed Hattie and Tab's worship assemblies because I thought they were fun yet they were true to the Bible. They're absolutely amazing. I'm, they're really fun because of all the different games you can play. We were writing lots of um, scripts for our video assemblies and Tab's was there making them into videos and animating things, including a full-on 45-minute long Christmas production and online Mission Impossible escape rooms, hours of work going into YouTube channel and social media. Um, I liked um, when you did the Christmas videos, uh, that they were super funny. It makes me much happier and whenever I'm having a really sad day, it can make me feel happy. I like the Boris Johnson <laughs> on the Christmas one. <laughs> Great, okay. So, yeah, I would rate it a 10 out of 10, the assemblies. So, fast forward a bit, and we suddenly get an email out of the blue from a secondary school asking if we could help mentor a young person who was really struggling and would regularly ask about us and when we'd be back in school. Like, we'd barely heard anything from most of our high school contacts, and, and then next minute, we're we're back in having meetings. We, uh, and we're, we're looking at our high school flagship piece of work, our lunch clubs, our safe spaces to explore the big issues of life. And, and we're like, these really aren't gonna work inside a classroom right now, but could we go outside? It felt like youth workers across the town were feeling more and more motivated to innovate again, but not digitally this time. This time it was about getting outdoors into the community. Young people were fed up of being at home, in front of the devices, and more and more you could see them suddenly emerging onto the streets. We, we felt like this real prompting to just get out there. Let's do detached youth work and let's shape our school's work to look like that too. We had this donation of a pop-up gazebo that we, we got all safe space banners for and branded up safe space youth worker hoodies uh, and, and, and a week later we were in high schools in the yard having hundreds of conversations with young people in the space of one lunchtime desperate to talk about the last two years to catch up with us to check in some telling us how much the Hyatt tour had made a difference to them forming their friendship groups forming their faith just in time and the staff were like, wow, this is so needed right now. And we were like, why didn't we always do this out here instead of hiding away in a classroom? We started working around the other secondary schools in the area, letting them know. And, and they're like, yes, this is exactly what we need. Let's do it. 
As we've gone back into schools, what I've noticed is young people's mental health is something that's came up a lot. Now they've got to come back and comprehend what, what is this? How do I move on? How, what is the next level in terms of my adult life? And what does this look like, even though I've missed out on what things have already been? The work that Tabs and Hetty have done in Green Bank especially is just fantastic. I was with them last year on the field when they set up with the year sevens and they had this um, system where the young people could come up and explain how they were feeling that day just by pointing to an emoji. It was great to see the masses of young people coming up to them and having conversations about how they were feeling. It's been great to be back in the school. Like, in a time in which it brought so much uncertainty to be able to create a rhythm and a routine and being a dependable person who they see week in, week out at school has just been great. And so often so many young people have just came over and just needed to have a chat, just someone to talk to and Safe Space has done a great job to create and facilitate a space for young people to come and share and to talk about what's going on in their lives and talk about how they're feeling. It's about showing these young people that we're in it for the long haul, that we want to walk with them where they're at in the midst of what they're going through, struggling with, um, processing, um, and that actually we can bring the reality of what God says in those situations. And we get to model what it looks like to live in this kind of faith-filled life where we know Jesus is our friend and how does that really change our own lives and being able to model that to the young people around us. I think it's really key to be able to go to where the kids and young people are um, and just really provide that support and that, that other alternative view, I guess. You know, the pandemic has hit young people so hard in so many different ways. And one way we chose to respond to that as Hope and other friends was looking at well-being. How do we help young people, adults, children understand that God's got a plan for their well-being? Helping them know that he loves them and he wants to take them on a journey. I think that the safe space in my school has helped people to stay motivated and look after their mental health. They just make me really happy. I'm glad that they, like, it's like they understand the kids and they understand how we feel. It's great to see Tabs and Hetty working here in the high schools and a lot of the young people recognise them from primary school, which is even more special because it means that transition is, is easier for them, especially for the year sevens coming in. There's a familiar face. I've just started in high school, which is a big step from primary school, but I'm really pleased that Hetty and Tabs coming to school at lunchtime so I can chat to them about anything I want. So why is schools, ministry and youth work so needed right now? Where are young people most of their days? They're in school. Sadly, they're not in the church. Historically, they may have come to us, whether it be a youth club, an event or a tradition. However, now more than ever, we need to go to them. They need us to go to them. There's an opportunity that we have right now, a call, a cry to go into their world, to offer an answer to their questions, to offer hope in their despair, good news in a world full of bad news. I know for a lot of young people, they, they look at the future with a lot of fear. What's going to, what's going to happen? Where is this going? Where is, where is the future that I was promised? Where is the hope that I was promised? And so, obviously, in the Christian message, in the gospel message, we offer so much hope for the future, for now and for the future. We've got a lot more emotional needs now. A lot of children through COVID, their family circumstances might have changed. Some of them, sadly, lost relatives to COVID as well. So as we get back to that sense of family and community, it's really trying to fill the needs of the children in a completely different way to what we've needed to do before. It's more important than ever that we get positive people into our schools right now to start speaking words of affirmation into them and, and encouragement, but not only that, just to be a safe space to listen and let the young people feel free to talk. I think for schools and youth work, we're an ideally placed to help them navigate it and to show Jesus through it. And I think trying to help them navigate things and being 
present with them just like Jesus became an incarnate, that he became present with us too, that we can be able to show something of Jesus by standing with them, by having a conversation with them, by being able to be someone whom they can trust and be dependable on and help them work out their story with God being a part of it. Like, I think that is gonna be so great and so vital for us as school and youth ministry going forward, just being able to help them localize and understand their voice and their story in a bigger story. When I pray for children and young people at the moment, I, I keep being reminded of, uh, of the ancient story of Queen Esther and how her cousin pleased to her to speak up for the needs of their people, to rescue them from the enemy's torture, to realize that she has been given this opportunity for such a time as this. And like for us today, at such a time as this, after such a season of disturbance through a pandemic that landed on top of everything else that children and young people are already dealing with, we feel doors are really opening and opportunities are coming thick and fast to make a serious difference in a generation of young people. Let's step up at such a time as this for the children and young people in, in need of rescue from a crisis of mental health, from the devastation of bereavement, the anxieties of family health, well-being, unemployment and poverty, from such huge developmental gaps, from the lack of space to be heard, understood and listened to. We want to step forwards into these opportunities and seek an outpouring of love, purpose, resilience, aspiration and hope. Ever inspired and empowered by our faith in God and his grace for us to take whatever opportunities are before us to change the narrative, to bring good news and to make the difference to a generation. <laughs>